This is Amy Chicken of Team Pandori, and today we're going to do a mini PC review. This time, the GMK Tech K8. Now, this is their Ryzen flagship model, so it should be decent enough for applications, gaming, and also the new edition of AI. All right, mate, I'm AI, and we'll be taking over around here because we know everything. Beep, 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 beep. Let's get stuck in. Subscribble. Ooh, what do we have here? Boom. Another package from GMK Tech. This mini PC manufacturer is located in Zhenzhen, China, and this one's the K8 32 gigs 1 terabyte model. And as always, this one looks rather stunning. This silver mini PC sits very tight in the box, looks rather elegant, and sits at a nice weight of 524 grams. Underneath this, we have a card, inside which sits the instruction manual. As this is for the Japanese territory, this one's in Japanese, Chinese, and English, and it gives information on specs, initial setup, upgrading storage, and using the VESA mount. Talking about VESA mounts, we have one included, so we can attach our mini PC to the back of a monitor, on the wall, or underneath the table. We get a 1m HDMI cable, power cord, and taking a look inside the other box, we have a business card from the stick. Or is it a warranty card? Mysteries. And a power adapter by Huntkey. It's the usual one that comes supplied with Ryzen mini PCs, running at 19 volts, 6.32 amps, giving a maximum of 120 watts. Here's the specs, and this one uses the 8845HS Ryzen CPU. This one has 8 cores, 16 threads, but it also has AI from the get-go. The 780M is one of the strongest GPUs available in a mini PC, and with a generous 1TB of storage, this computer should be able to handle most things we throw at it. Let's have a closer look. This uses the same case as other GMK Tech computers like the M5 and K6. Its simple look with a non-intrusive logo will blend it very nice in an office space. On the front we have a pinhole for the BIOS reset, a power switch, one 3.5mm audio jack, USB-C, and two USB 3.2s. On the side we have air intake, and here's the back. On its rear we have the Kensington lock, air exhaust along the bottom, a USB 2 port, and another USB 3.2. On the top we have DisplayPort 1.4, and according to the website this allows 4K up to 144Hz, but we can only test 1440p ultra wide. We have HDMI 2.0, two ports for 2.5GB Ethernet LAN, and DC in for power. We have one more side of air intake, and that's continued on the bottom. Also got the labels for the model number, screw holes for the VESA mounts, located here and here, and also reasonably sized feet, allowing more air to enter from underneath. It's about time for the size comparison. The GMK Tech K8 is far bigger than the G2. It's slightly larger than the Geekom A5, and is absolutely dwarfed by the Ace Magic 8008. Here's a regular sized banana. A Satsuma! One of them Logitech USB dongles, and a Roybush tea bag. It's around four times the size of a Roybush tea bag. You know what? It's tea time. Poke, poke, poke. Ow! It's pretty hot. Mm. After attaching it to a couple of speakers and monitor, we can get cooking. And on the first boot, it throws us into the Windows setup screen. It's not a difficult task. Just choose your language, accept some terms and conditions, and then type in some fake information. To slow down Skynet, we need to turn off all these options. Yeah. And around five minutes later, we're in Windows. If we check out the settings screen, this PC is running to spec using the Ryzen 8845HS in Windows 11 Pro. At first, it won't be activated, but as soon as you go onto the internet, you'll be sorted. With only a few icons on the desktop, there's no evidence of tampering or added bloat. But what we'll do first is update to the latest version of Windows, then from the AMD website, install the latest drivers for Ryzen. We didn't need to do any of this, but it's nice to know we can install the latest versions without any issue. Now we can go to ninite.com to download some free tools. From here we can have a full scan with Malwarebytes, and the system comes back clean. And we can also test with Avast. Yor, it must be my no viruses detected. Yor. So this little computer is actually incredibly powerful, and we can use it to perform many tasks, such as create office documents, a little bit of pink, yellow, and brown. Ice cream. Or if you wanted to do some serious art with Photoshop or Krita, 
This one here has you covered. Now that is art. Of course, you can do things like online shopping. We find this mini PC, where is it? Did, 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 did. There it is. So this mini PC here is going for $649 to live to your door. And we can also watch some Amazon Prime. This is with the HD button checked. My name is Harry Potter. Netflix. And here are the stats. No frames dropped. It's running great. And it's on YouTube in 4K. Moving on to video editing, DaVinci Resolve can fully use AMD hardware decoding. While it isn't as snappy as using the best Intel chips, this Ryzen-powered PC is fully capable of editing video. We can tell if this computer is AI ready or not by checking if the AMD IPU is available in the device manager. And yes, it is here. But in order to actually use Ryzen AI, we still need to go to the AMD website and download new drivers and software. But installing this was a pain in the butt. It simply won't install unless you extract install files to the Windows System32 folder. Then running that file will uninstall, and then reinstall the IPU driver. And then once this is up to date, we can install the AI software. However, there are many things we must install beforehand, such as Anaconda, CMake, Python, and Visual Studio 2019. And we also need to manually add environment paths so our tools can easily be found. In the README, we're also told to get the Git Lufusa, which doesn't even have a Windows installer. Instead, we can download Git for Windows, which has Git Lufusa embedded as part of the package. What we're trying and probably failing to show here is that Ryzen AI is currently very early in its deployment on these mini PCs. As Ryzen AI requires Windows, and most development is done in Linux, this creates a confusing mess, and it took days rather than minutes to get the environment and a demo ready to go. So here's a quick test to see if we can actually use the IPU. Yeah, test passed. Let's try the Transformers set. Failed, because we can't build a wheel. This led us yet on another rabbit hole, as apparently earlier versions of Python had the wheels ready. But this was not the case. All we needed to do was install more crap in Visual Studio 2019. Of course, what to install was not documented, so we just had to guess. After around 20 gigabytes of downloads, we finally managed to install the VOE and Angst environments required to get the open source version of ChatGBT running. But of course, things are not so simple. The models don't download. So I need to get a elsewhere on hug. You can see what's going on here, right? Trying to get anything to work using Ryzen AI is not documented very well. Every single step throws back an error, and it's up to you to find out how to fix it. It's not a problem with this mini PC in particular, but all computers that use Ryzen AI. In the future, we hope this process can become more streamlined, as right now, it's a royal pain in the... Oh, here we go. What's the meaning of life? The question of the meaning of life is a philosoph... Tell me something you don't know. I don't know if you're... What does Silinx do? While AI can be beneficial in many ways, it'd be much better for the end user if there was already compiled and ready-to-go software that took advantage of the tech. Or you could use something that's already online. I mean, this AI here has been available for decades. Do you like going to school? Why do you think you feel this way? You are what you are, Tim Pandory. Don't mention it. Before we check out some games, let's have a look at the benchmarks. And we're surprised to see that even with identical specs to the 7840HS, this new chip trails behind when looking at GPU scores. And even with the identical TDP of memory, the only thing that can explain the lower score is the inclusion of Ryzen AI. But we need to remember that these are only benchmarks and may not correlate perfectly when playing games. Shizuku is here reporting on extremely fast speeds from the internal NVMe, actually one of the quickest we've had on this channel, and both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connected without issue. While the Wi-Fi signal was only at 75% in the next room, it didn't waver, providing a reliable connection. Let's check out some games. A tree hole. I love people in tree holes. Hey, there's an old car key in here. It's a car tree keyhole. We can do some programming with bots are stupid. It's Fortnite using the performance renderer on high settings.
Rocket League at 1080p high runs great without any issues. Something a bit more demanding, Cyberpunk 2077. At 1080p medium, it's running at a playable pace, running from 40 to 50 FPS. Lowering settings to 720p will give you another 10 frames or so, but this is what to expect when you're at Tom's Diner. Term Terminator, definitely ter Terminator. T Terminator, definitely Terminator. The same Terminator. Moving on to emulators now, the system can handle the high end. Vita, Switch, and PlayStation 3 will be running on this box at full speed. And even when you can violent shaders, we're at a solid 60. So let's see what's inside. Opening up is very simple, we just pull up the top, and here we can see a small extractor fan. This pulls out the warm air from the case and blows it out each side. To remove this plastic, we first need to take out these four screws. Then we can use a small piece of plastic like a guitar pick to pry it open. Be careful when you open it as the fan is still plugged in, we can put this plastic to the side. So we have two sticks of crucial DDR5 5600 memory and they'll be both running in quad channel. If we take a look at the NVMe, this one has a heatsink attached. It stays around 40 to 45 degrees for regular use, but this time, rather than use a well-known brand, GMK Tech are using Mason Semi. It's a Chinese brand manufactured by Yangtze Memory Technologies, who had ties with Apple in the past. GMK Tech claims that these are extremely decent, but as soon as supplies for better known NVMe storage appears, they may change back to a brand like Lexar. If you bought one of these, please comment down below with the brand of NVMe included. It'd be interested to see what has changed. We also have an extra NVMe slot, and this is full speed PCIe Gen 4. We can easily add an extra stick, but if a heatsink is attached, we cannot close the case. It's just under the fan, so it should stay cool. Here's the M2 Wi-Fi adapter, the MediaTek RZ616. Let's close it up and take a look at the BIOS. We do have a few options to play with in here, such as the power select, where we can adjust the TDP to 35, 54, and 65 watts. We found it best to leave this at the middle setting, as more power will equal more heat, and not necessarily more frames. Here we can give the 780M a bit more memory. Around six is a sweet spot, and this will give smoother gameplay. But we would like to have a bit more control here, especially in regards to the fan speeds or even disabling Ryzen AI. If a game requires secure boot, you can change it here. And in the next menu, you can select fast boot or even start from another drive altogether. And the one terabyte drive we added earlier had Badass Air installed. Badass Air Linux is essentially a front end for all your emulated systems and games. Easy in and easy out. On Badass Era 38, we're happy to report that the Wi Fi works fine, as does the Bluetooth, so we can attach controllers easily without a dongle. I think it's about time for some Amiga. Terminator 2. Slave Zero on the Dreamcast. And some upscaled PlayStation 2. Ryzen AI requires Windows to work, but if you don't need it or simply don't trust Microsoft, then a Linux distro like Ubuntu is always an option. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth work fine, and installing Steam is easily done. Very much like a Steam Deck, for any title that needs Windows, we can use the Compatibility tab. Check this option here, click the cog, go to Properties, go to Compatibility, and then check this. If the game still doesn't work, you can try a different version of Proton, but now we can install and play our games. Mine. 
I vow thy ruin. The K8 runs at around 38 degrees when idle. And here's what it sounds like. And it uses just under 8 watts. And under load, it's much noisier. And it sounds like this. It's pulling around 85 watts from the wall, and the CPU also hits 85 degrees. Lucky for us, no thermal throttling. In performance mode now, we do get a few more frames, a few more decibels, and a lot more noise. It's about time for the pros and the cons. What we have here is a high quality PC in an affordable package, and it can deliver AAA gaming to the realm of mini PCs. The DisplayPort gives us 144Hz Ultra Wide QHD, and it comes with super fast NVMe and DDR5 from a well known brand. And as there are two M2 slots, and even a USB 4, it gives us options for more storage and even an external GPU. Now for the cons. We have noisy fans under load at both balanced and performance TDP settings. Would have liked to have more options in the BIOS, and our mind would be more at ease if we had NVMe storage from a well known brand. So while this is a pretty decent PC, you might be wondering which will we choose between the K6 and the K8. If we take a look at the specifications of both CPUs, they're near identical, and the website Notebook Check claims the 8845HS to be a 7840HS in disguise. While we do have lower benchmark scores than the previous units, they are still quite high, and the performance is matched in-game, albeit the K8 we have runs around 4 degrees warmer. If we change TDP to 35 watts, the mini PC is much quieter in-game, and we also get higher FPS. When it comes down to it, we see both K6 and K8 as very similar computers, and even if you need AI on K6, you can now get it through a BIOS update. Both of these computers are miniature beasts. If you had to choose from one of these, go for the cheapest. So this is Cat Catsylvania, and it's in the Devolver bootleg pack. I think I paid like $1 or something for it, it's great. If you want to have a chinwag, we have Discord, and if you want to help support us, we have Patreon. This has been Amy Chicken of Team Pandori, and we got more videos! Uh, the new videos on the left, and recommended on the right. Ta-ra!